I want to welcome everyone this hour. Welcome once again. This is your host, Prophetess Dr. Christine Sidi. Welcome you from Overcomers Deliverance and Healing Ministry. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you the subject called God of God of Great Mercy and Remembrance. We are serving a God of great mercy and remembrance. God do remember. God is a God who remember. God does not forget. The devil does not forget. God does not forget. God remember you. You, you yourself, you might forget, but God will never forget you or will never, never forsake you. So our God is a God of, of remembrance. Our God is a God of mercy. So we are going to, to, to God who is full of mercy and compassion to see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. I want once again to welcome you. Thank you very much for coming and joining. Uh, invite your followers in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look in the book of uh, Psalms, Psalms 90, verse 3. The book of Psalms 90, verse 3. Hallelujah. Psalms 98, verse 3. Sorry. Psalms 98, verse 3. The Bible says, He has remembered his loving, loving kindness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the hands of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. You know, God is a loving God. God is kind. God is good. That's why we know that God is good. He's good to people who are good to him. He remember, he remember, he remember the way he remembers the children of Israel, the way he remembered the, the children of, of Israel when they were in the bondage, when they were suffering, when they were being enslaved. So God, this, this hour, God is God of remembrance. God will remember you. The situation where you are, what you are going through, God, God, God will remember you. God has reached a point where he's going to remember you because he's a loving God. He's a loving kindness God. God is so good. God is good. And God is so good. He remember you. Don't think that God does not know you. God has been watching you, looking what you are going to do. But the time has come when he will remember you. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. God will remember your situation. God will remember your circumstances. God will remember your pain. God is going to remember what you are going through in Jesus' name. Now, if you see he remembered, if he did not remember the children of Israel, they could have died in Egypt. They could all be furnished and died. But when they, they cried, they prayed, they, they said, God of our forefathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, where are you? Now you know that where you are also, you have been calling God. You are saying, God, I'm suffering, God. I am I'm going through this. Where are you? Like a lady called me. This lady was on tears. She was in tears. She has been suffering for a long time. And her pain and sickness does not go. She has a lot of pain. She can't breathe properly. And she feels a lot of pain. She was crying. Pain, really pain. She has suffered so many years. I can't, I don't know what, how many years she told me. I can't remember. Because she was screaming, crying, and pain. And calling me to help her. Still crying so much. Please help me. Please help me. I told her, God is a massive God and a kindness. Mercy. God will remember you and touch your life and heal you. I am not God, but God I serve. I know that he will be able to touch your life and, and help you. If I'm God, yes, I can do straight away. But because I'm not God, I would ask him. I would ask him mercy. Mercy. His mercy to, to, to fall upon you. Yeah. And I cannot be God because my judgment is different. God is full of mercy. God is so good. And God's judgment, he, he, he does, he judges according to what he sees. He, you can't bribe God. He, 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 you, can't, you, can't, you can't tell God what to do. He is our father and he loves us. So people of God, we, God will remember, remember you. God will remember me. God will remember your situation. God will remember the circumstances you are in, in Jesus' name. And, and if we look at Psalms, Psalms 25, verse 6 to 7. Uh, Psalms 25, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth 
and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me for you, you, Lord, you are God. You know, here, here David is telling God, you know, David, David, he, he killed somebody. David, he was a, a murderer. He killed people. He, he, he shed a lot of people. He killed so many people. You know, when David was looking at his life, and he see that, God, please, I know that you are so good. You are full of mercy. You are a great love. Yeah? He said, remember, Lord, you are great mercy and love for the are from old. So David was bleeding God for his, his great mercy and, and love. Yeah, you you have to tell God. You know, God he, God is looking worshippers. God is looking people who who will go to Him with the kind words and ask Him God because we are in the situation where we don't know what to do. You have been prayed. You have done everything. Now is your time to bleed mass of God to tell God how is God and you remind Him because when you mention Him, He knows that you remember. You remember. You remember Him now. David remembered God and they said, please, you know, do not remember the sins of my youths. You know, when David was youth, was young, he was young, he killed Goliath, he killed other people. Yeah. So it, David seemed this. David was not a holy person. And remember, he, he sinned, but he was asking God, please don't remember my sin. Don't remember. God remembers. God remembers. Now he was he was bleeding the God. He was begging God, please God, do not remember the sin of my youth. Everybody has sinned. Jesus Christ, I came to forgive our sins and 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 forget. But if we continue sinning, then all the sins we have been forgiven, it will come back. Now David understood the, how God operates. He said that. Because he, David was in a situation where, where he was attacked by enemies every side. He didn't know what to do. And then one thing, David is remember, he said, Lord, have mercy. You are full of great mercy. You are, you are loving God. Do not remember. Is it my sins? You know, you can ask, is it my sins causing this problem? Because sins can cause a problem too. Now, David was asking God, Please don't remember my sins. If there is anything I've done against you, do not remember God. Forgive me. You are so kind. You are loving God. Have mercy upon me, God. Now, you, if you look at this, he said, he, he, first of all, he told God, remember, Lord, you are great mercy and love for they are from of hold. You know, he told God that God himself to remember that he is a massive God. He has a great mercy and, and love from the and and from the hold. From since God created man, he loved man. That's why he created us as his own image. God created us as his own image. He loved us so much. That's why even he gave his only begotten son to die for us. So God is love and God has mercy. Therefore, people of God, when David addressed God like that, God, he touches the heart of God and God has to move very quickly to help David. Now, the Bible says, uh, God says, uh, the, the Bible says, do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your love remember me for you for you lord you are good so david was a rebellious i don't know what he did because i know there was a time he messed up and and god nearly killed him and they sent a prophet david to choose what what would happen to him david said let me choose god let me be in the hand of god because god is a massive god he will have mass on me if I choose the angel, the angel will not have mass on me. Let me choose God who will have mass, me, mass on me. And his punishment, it will be fair than the punishment that angel will, will come for me. So David chose the, uh, the, 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 the God. You know, God, David, David is, he was a man like you and me. He was a human being. Now he, he was living in the world where we live and full of sin. So God he said, people can be rebellious. People can be rebellious. People can be rebellious. But you can ask God, I've rebelled against you, not to do the right thing. Lord, don't, don't remember. Forgive me because you are God. 
Now, when David asked God to remember, God remembered. And God had to protect the David and have mercy upon him. In Jesus' name. Now, we are looking at Psalms 90, verse 17. Psalms, Psalms 90, verse 17. The Bible says, May the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yeah, yes, establish the work of our hands in the name of Jesus. You see, may the favor, let the favor, let the favor of God fall upon you, fall upon the work of your hand. When you are working, let the favor of God fall upon your hands, the work of your hand. When you look at the work of your hand, you will be happy. You say, yes, this is the favor of God. You will be happy and praise God because God has favored your, your, the work of hand and God is, is full of mercy and compassion. You know, many of us, some of us, we have been working with our hands, but we cannot see any favor. We don't see anything. You cannot see in you. If, if anybody asks you, show me what you have done in your hand, you have nothing to show. But God would have favor on the work of your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. God will remember the work of your hand. God of mercy will remember the work you have of your hand and bless the work of your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will establish the work of God. May God establish the work of God because our God is a God of mercy, is a God of love that will remember the work of your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Let God remember the work of your hand and establish the work of God, your hand. Look at this. May the Lord, may, may the Lord of the, may the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of hand. May, may the Lord our God establish the good work of our hands. Let God, that good God, establish the work of our hand, our hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Let our hands be blessed. When we touch anything, shall be blessed in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God, we thank God. Hallelujah. Another scripture is from the book of First, Second Timoth. Second Timoth. Uh, 1 verse 9. Second Timoth. 1 verse 9. The Bible says, He has saved us. And they call us to a whole life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and the grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. You know, uh, our God, who is so good, God, he has called us to his whole life. life. He has called us. Not that because of anything we have done, because of his great mercy, because of his mercy, because he has remembered us. He has remembered us. He has called us the way we had. No matter where you, the way you are, where you come from, you have not done anything special, but because of his love, because of his mercy, he has called you the way you are. You have, that's why I tell some people, you have to love yourself. Don't reject yourself. Once God has called you, that is a gift, a big gift. That is mercy. Many people in the world, they are living in a terrible world. They are living in a, a situation where they, have no, they don't know God. They don't care. If, if you see, you may think the world is ending. If you see news, what is happening? You, pe those people, they don't know God. They don't know anything. They, 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 they are just in darkness. But you, who has been called, who has been chosen by God himself, you have to appreciate nothing that you didn't do anything because he loves you and they remember his masses. He picked you and chose you. We have to appreciate and thank him. Look at those people who are living in darkness. The way that they live, you, you will say, God, have mercy. Jesus, come back. Jesus, what are you waiting, Jesus? Come. Yeah, you see the world, the way the things are, youth, things, what, what is happening in the world right now? People are living really in darkness. People that are worshipping idols. People that are worshipping anything. They believe anything. They are controlling anything. Yeah, They are controllers. Controllers who uses money and they don't care. They have no mercy. They, they just, they are ruining people. They are wasting youths. They are wasting the life of young people. Yeah, Young people that are doomed. Now they, they don't want to hear anything to do with God. But you. You have been used by him. 
not because of anything, because of the grace, because of his grace in Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has choose you, not because of anything. He loves you he, because of his mercy. Therefore, people of God, I, when I think this, I, 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 I will spend, I will suspend everything to give God thanks and lead his thing and honor him because he calls me not because of anything. Personally, if it was not God who called me, no human being could have stand in front of, in front of me to preach to me because I was the type of the person who could not, you could not tell me anything, but God. Who, who loves me through his masses he called me and 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 i answered and and humbled me up to this time i've never regretted you know people people they need god they need the mass of god they really need the mass of god some people you can preach to them and they can easily give their life to jesus some people you can't tell them anything about god they cannot listen one time i was with a person and this person is a wealthy person, very rich person. But he, he had a cancer and he was working with a stick. Now, this person, when I was telling him about God, he looked at me and said, you need God. Me, I don't need God. I don't need God. You need God so that he can help you. Because your country is so poor, you need, you need help. So I look at him, I said, Mr. Man, you tell me I need God. And look at your situation. This same God that you are telling me I need God, I have him. But you, you are, you, you are the one who need God so that he can heal, heal you and help. He said, no, I know the doctors and the, in our family, we have cancer. It is a, it's, a, it's a family. Cancer is a family thing. So I'm not afraid of death. I'm ready. I'm ready. I said, okay, that's you. But where would you go if you die? He said, I don't care. That's the end. I don't know where I would go, but I know when, when, when I die, I'll be, I'm finished. I'm becoming nothing. That's all. Now, there is that after after there is there is life after death. When you die, where would you go? Where would your soul be? Where would your soul be? Let's 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 thank God and, and love him and say thank you for choosing us. Thank you for salvation you have given us. Thank you for calling us. Because of your love and mercy, thank you. Some people, they, they, God has not reached them. God has not called them. God has, if God calls you, there is no way you can hide. When God called Joanna and told him, go to Nineveh and program the message, my message, prophesize there. Joanna tried to hide, said, no, I don't want to go. What happened? The, 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 the fish swallowed him and he has to go by force, by fire. He had to go and program what God has sent him to go. So if God call you, there is no way you can hide. There was a man. He was hiding from God. He didn't want to the call of God. And then he got an accident. His hand was cut off. He left his hand. And then while he was in the hospital, he was thinking and thinking. Then he had a dream. God was talking to him. Uh, do you, are you ready now to serve me or you want me to cut your feet? And then he said, God... Are you the one who talking to me? He said, he said, he said, yes. And then this man, he did, he didn't want to serve God. He didn't like, he didn't want to serve God. And then he said, do you want me to come and cut your leg so that you can serve me? And then he said, he, he said, no, God, I will serve you. So this man, he went to serve God. He became a pastor with one, one hand. And he had two hands because he, he refused. He was running away from God. And they got the accident with his own car and his hand was cut. So God, who has called us, God of mercy, who has remembered you, to, who has remembered you and he has called you, not because of anything. He loves you. Many people out there, they are suffering, they are in darkness, and God has not called you. But you have been called, you have been chosen, not because of anything. May God Almighty bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Now, when you look at this scripture, the book of Isaiah, 3rd verse 18, the Bible says, Isaiah 3rd verse 18, the Bible says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you, Therefore, he will raise up to show you, you compassion. For the Lord is a, a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Our God is a God of compassion. God is God. is a God of justice. And God blesses who wait for him. You, you have to wait upon God. 
Don't rush. Don't run before God. Because our God, if you run before God, you will mess. Our God is a God of justice. He's a God of compassion. He will have mass on you. He will remember. He will remember his loving kindness. He, he will remember. So if you wait upon the Lord, he will come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You may be, be, be complaining, saying, how long? It has taken a long time. But patience pays. And God of mercy, God of full of compassion, he will come to you when you are patiently wait upon him. Just tell God, God, I am here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm waiting patient upon you, God, because you are a God of compassion. You are a God of justice. Your judgment is, is not like a human being. You are a God of justice. God of justice is a God of justice. He doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. He's a justice God. He's a God of justice and compassion. There was a man. He was accused. He was accused and he was put in prison for three years. Now this man, when he, he went to prison, he pleaded this scripture. He said, God, God, you are a God of justice. God, you are a God of justice. God, you are a God of compassion. God, you know I did not do this thing. Why should I be, jailed, be put in jail in three years, God? God of justice. This man, he was chanting. He was talking in prison. He was, every time people could see his mouth like that, he, when he sleeps, he was just shaking his head and telling God, God, you are a God of justice. You are a God of, of compassion. Why should I be charged here in the in the jail? And I did not do what, what and I did not do at this thing that I'm, I'm in jail. And then God appeared to him. He said, tomorrow you will be released. Now, the person who, who, who said that he, he did the crime, him his, his own son went to police station and he told the police station, I my father told me to lie against the, the person. Now I'm coming here to you to put me in prison and release that person. I, it is me. Everything the person who did, it is me who did. Now I'm here to put me in prison instead of that person. It is my pa my father who told me to say so. Now the police reversed the, the cases and found, and they explained everything to them. And they said, I'm here, put me in prison. So that man, they, they, they went to the jail and released the man, and this man was put in prison. And in fact, he was put in prison for life. Now, because the crime he did, it was bad. Yeah, the, the other man was put in jail for three years. Now this one, when he went and he gave himself and say everything he did, and the other man was released. And the time he was, he was put in, in jail for life. After being put in jail for life, again something happened to this same man. And then in the jail he got saved. After God saved, there is this man called Leonard Bonga. Uh, uh, the, the evangelist is now old, Leonard Bonga. Leonard Bonga was was going to god told him that he's going to preach in prison and he said there's a man who is going to be released in prison and then this man he he had a dream that he, he would be released from prison he started praying he got saved there in prison so he was praying god did a miracle god did a miracle to this man through the man of god through the prophet uh, who went there and after the prayer and, and God did a miracle, and the, the man preached in prison, and then the prison had, and then his name was up. He said, this man, he went to, to the police himself, he gave himself to police, and they bleed mass of God. So God has forgiven him. Why should we, why can't, why can't you, why can't we release him? Because other criminal, even if they are put in prison, they will never confess their sin. They say, they, they, they will still deny, 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 deny until the ground will prove him, them that they are guilty. But this is the man who go and give himself and says that, yes, I was deceived by my father and now I'm here putting me in jail and listed innocent person. We need to forgive him. The man was forgiven. He became a minister. He became a pastor. So God, who is God of justice, who God of, of, of compassion, he will have mass and compassion and over your life and your family because he's God. Wait, wait for him. He will come to help you in Jesus' name. Yes, God, we thank God. Now, the Bible, in the book of Romans 1, Romans 12, 1, the Bible says, Therefore, I urge you, brother, brothers and sisters, in the fear of God, have in few 
in fear of God is mercy to offer your, your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now, here, Paul is asking the brothers and sisters to give their life as, as a living sacrifice because God is God of mercy. You, you see, this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and blessing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Proper worship, proper, true and proper worship is to give your, your body as a living sacrifice. You give your life as God as, as a living sacrifice. This is the true and holy blessing, blessing God. You see, God, God needs God needs a true worshiper who worship him truth and love, who worship him in love and truth, because God is mercy is for is, he has hovered you, is looking how you can offer yourself to him as a living sacrifice. You have to hover yourself as a living sacrifice. You have to sacrifice yourself to discipline yourself. Everything you do, it needs to discipline. If you are not disciplined, no matter what you do, it will not prosper because of undiscipline. People, people of God, we need discipline. If it is this, if it was not this God, I could I was a very bad character. I was miserable and evil and a bad character. But through the discipline, I, I decided to discipline myself, and nobody will discipline you. Nobody, you will go to prison, come back. And still you are the same, same person. But if you discipline yourself and give God yourself as a living sacrifice, God will, will, will help you. God will mold you. God will help you in Jesus' name. You know, our God, he is God. He, he loves you and he knows exactly who, what your response is. I said we are doing prayer and fasting. Now, nobody will discipline me. Or nobody will take me to court. Nobody will report me. I have decided to discipline myself to do fasting certain hours. If I want to do dry fasting, I will do it. If I want to do uh, eight hours, I will do it. Nobody is forcing me. Nobody is, is, is checking on me or report on me. If I want to eat breakfast, if I want to lie that I'm not fasting, it's up to me. But I choose to discipline myself. I choose to discipline myself certain food that I'm not going to eat whatsoever. By all means, I, the devil knows and God knows I've decided that I am, I am ready. And I'm not going to eat certain food. And I'm declaring fasting and I will fast in Jesus' name. No matter, the, no matter what will happen, I have decided I will be fasting certain hours for 21 days. In fact, I've been fasting almost one year now. I've been fasting all, all of the time, every time. I only open sometimes two days, one day, but most of the time I do fast. So, therefore, if you need to be a living sacrifice, that's how you discipline yourself, and God will help you in Jesus' name. I, I don't lose weight. My weight is still maintained like that. Even if I fast as much as I can, I'm still like this. You never meet, see me thin. You never see me big. I'm just medium size. So God is with me, and I know it, it will be with you too. Hallelujah! Praise be the name of Jesus. Uh, the book of Romans six verse fourteen. The Bible says, "For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Sins will not be your master." Sins will not be your master because you are not under the law. You are under the grace. They are under the grace. They must. God is full of mercy. God forgive. God forgives you and forget. God forgive you and forget. God forgives you and forget. So we are living by the mass of God, by the grace of God. We are not living under the law. If we are living under the law, then some of us, we could not be free. But because of the, the masters of God, now we are living by the grace of mass, by the grace of God. By the grace of God, God who has full of compassion and mercy, in the mighty name of Jesus. Here is a, the, the, the scripture whereby David was remember once again God. He was praying a, a, a prayer, a very painful prayer, traveling prayer. Traveling prayer, that's the prayer 
which will touch the heart of God and, and the God will forgive him because he, 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 he feels that he is a sinner. When he was born, he was born with sin. He, he, he continually asking God of his mercy and loving kindness and have mercy upon him. You remember this man who was called uh, Patrimayo, son of Demayo. When he went to Jesus, what he did, he said, Jesus, have mercy upon me. Have mercy, master. Have mercy. Have mercy. I need your mercy to be delivered. I need mercy to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Now, here, the book of Psalms 51, verse 1, the Bible says, uh, David is praying here now. He said, have mercy upon me, O Lord. According to the loving kindness, according to the multitude of the tender masses, brought out my transgression now. Call upon the great provider and he will surely answer you. You see, here, he's telling God, have mercy upon me, O God. According to the loving kindness, according to loving kindness, according to the multitude of the tender's mercy. God is a multitude tender's mercy. God has multitude of mercy. God has thousands and thousands and millions and millions of masses. God has masses. The masses of God will fall upon you and brought out your transgression and brought out all your sins and brought out everything that you have done. And then, and, then, and, then, and then you will be free. You don't have to stay. You don't have to condemn yourself. You know some people, they are still in guilt. They are guilty of the sins that God has forgiven them a long time ago. Some people are so guilty. A lady was telling me, because she did abortion, and now she, she, she remembers the baby, and that the, how the baby, and the, what, how old the baby will be, and what she did, she cried and remember. She said that I'm, I'm, I killed my baby. I, I did abortion. I said, I said, God has forgiven you. Don't remember. You just focus. And God has brought out your sins and your your transgression. Your sin has gone. God has forgiven. When you do something you don't know, you 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 didn't know. Now you know. Just let it go. You don't have to be guilty. You don't have to be so guilt. You, you are conscious. You are guiltiness. Shall, shall go. You have to be free by yourself. Because now, David was, here David was talking to God. If you look at how much David was bleeding to God for mercy, so many times David was bleeding mercy because David was remember his sins and what he was doing during when he was youth, when he was in a when he was a king, when he was looking that woman who was bathing, and it, and they went and looked at the woman when he, his the army his only army they are in the war and him he was interesting of loving women having sex with women sleeping with women and while his army are on are, are on the on the war and that was breaking the rules and law. David, he remember all of what he did. Now he was asking God, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I was born with sin. I know God that I for I need forgiveness. So he was still reminding God and and preach God of mercy. God said, I have forgiven you and I've forgotten all your sins. I remember all what you have done and I'm going to bless you. I will bless the work of your hand. According to the scripture that you have read, God will help you. Don't stay there. God has forgiven you and he has forgotten you, has, has forgotten. So he has remembered the goodness, the good things that you have done. He has remembered you are over him. It is the time that you will stand firm and pray that anything that make you to remember, let them die. You know, the enemy can rem can make you to remember all the things, to remember bad things, bad things. Every time you start praying, you start to remember bad, bad things that are coming in your mind, all the evil. They put what you call the spirit of death in your bed, the spirit of death in everything you are you, you have. Because that is the spirit of death, it is the one which makes you to remember. You don't have dreams, you don't have visions because of this spirit that makes you to remember things 
uh, as the age of your age and you, it makes you to remember backward where you came all things that have happened it does not make you to remember good things it does not make you to remember the bible even to remember what god has done to you it only, only make you to remember bad things bad things may god deliver you may the, the fire of god wash you may the fire of god burn every demon operating you that is giving you remembrance the spirit of death and hell that is operating on you make you to remember the past may god deliver you in the mighty name of jesus yes lord my father my father i pray every opposition against your possession i command them to die every opposition opposing you that opposition putting a lot of pressure on you make you to remember all those things make you that you are so much oppressed let them die let them be crushed into pieces in the mighty name of jesus i pray every opposition against your position let them die die in the name of jesus every tongue anointed by satan to speak against your life let them be destroyed you know the satanic tongue speaking against you anointed and they, they speak and they provoke you they provoke you seriously they cast you they condemn you they make sure that they you they remind you all the time they say you you call yourself a christian you you they they provoke you and they are watching you monitoring you and they are speaking against you all the time so that you are, you can backslide your christianity can go down and they will laugh at you stand firm rebuke that tongue command them that god has saved me i will come against you and speak against you you are a liar you are a liar stand firm and god will help you in jesus name they are satanic anointed tongue they are satanic psychic their, their work is to come they speak against you they make sure that you you are got you are, you are, you are, your christianity is being shaken you don't have to look at that you have you seen god has forgiven you man has refused to to forgive you they always talk about you talk about your your ability talk what you did and god has forgiven you. that's why you should not be a church god has said don't charge don't judge. You don't know the relationship of the, this person has. The person has repent, has gone to God. God has forgiven him or her. And you, you, you with, with your satanic anointing tongue, you still condemn the person. You still speaking evil against that person. May the Lord cut that tongue and break your, your teeth in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those tongues, they are liars. They are lying. Those mouths, they have to be shut. They are lying. They are full of lies. Let them be, be destroyed in Jesus' name. I, I pray, I declare every power that is over you, every evil power, anything that is controlling you, that make you, the mass of God cannot prevail against you. Let those power be wept away. Let them be removed. I declare by the power in the blood of Jesus, that that enemy is be destroyed in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. The search is over. The siege is over. The siege is over. The problem you are facing is over. God has forgiven you. God has full of mercy. God is a great God of mercy and and its remembrance. Do not let the enemy to remind you to make you to remember the past. The whole has come, the new, the whole has gone, the new has come. You are a new creature. Whole has gone, new has come. So remember that our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, has washed your sins, as 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 washed your sins, and you are clean. The Bible says, even if your sins are as 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 blood, God is going to wash them and it become like white as snow. Therefore, people of God, forgive yourself and move forward. Don't look what the enemy is telling you. Don't don't look at what the enemy is, is, is accusing you. Every yoke upon your hands break. You know there's yokes in your hands. Let those yokes be broken. Let every yoke, any soul tie, anything tying you, anything connecting you with the dead people, anything connecting you with the evil people, anything connecting you with Satan, let it be broken into pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, that, that our power. You know, there's power. You study this, you don't finish. You you go for this, you don't you don't finish. You go to job upon job, you don't finish. I pray and prophesy by the power and the blood of Jesus. The power of poor finishing shall die, shall die completely in Jesus' name. The power that makes you to wander from place to place, let it be destroyed 
Vulnerable spirit, you are a child of of you are a child of God. I cut them off, I bind them, and I lend them powerless in Jesus' name. People have been going from city to city, from 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 states to states to look for a job. That is wonderful. Yes, if there is a better job, that, that that is good. But you cannot be wandering all states. All countries, you go everywhere. You have not stayed, you are not stable. You have not worked in a place even two or three years. You work a few months, you leave that place. That is vulnerable spirit. Therefore, I cast that demon. I cast that vulnerable spirit in Jesus' name. May God give you a stable, give you a stable mind that you would you will do the work with your hands as your hands has been blessed by God in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I am praying that God. In the name of Jesus Christ, every every evil power of your father's house assigned to assign against your hand, I command them to die. There is powers of your father's house. These powers of your father's house or your mother's house, if you cannot deal with them, they are the ones behind your problem. They cannot let you be happy. They cannot let you to enjoy the forgiveness and the masses of God God has for you. Always these powers, they are behind you. They are following you. They are attacking you. They are coming up, up, upon your, everything you put your hand. You are not kindred. You will, they will not do you anything. Crush them. Destroy them. Abraham, Abraham, he has to come out of out of of of, the, of, the, of his father's house. That's when he was blessed. So there is a powers of the father's house. When they are on you, you can't you can't get blessing. So you have to get them out of your life. You have to rebuke them and tell them, get my out of my life. Let me leave me alone. I'm gone. You have to tell the powers of your father's house. I'm gone. I'm not you. I'm nothing. I don't have anything to do with you. And let those powers leave you. Because there are powers that worship idols. So you you don't worship idol anymore. But they want you to worship you. They, they worship idols. That's why those powers are very strong. They need you to declare them. And say, I'm gone. Leave me alone. I'm gone. Like what Abraham did. Abraham told, God told Abraham, get out, out away from your father's house. If you remain there, no blessing, nothing will come. So that's how God blessed Abraham. Therefore, people of God, I come against every powers of your father's house. That is hindering you. That is all in your presence. That is all in the mass of God from you. Let them die. Let them be destroyed. Let them be lent and powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God, my father. I want to thank you, God. I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord. I pray for your people, God. I pray touch the life of your people, my father. God of masses, have mass upon your people. Have mass, God, my God. Forgive them anything they have done against you. And conscious or conscious, they are, they are, they don't know. But God, you know that God, you, that your masses have mercy, have mercy upon them, God. Have mercy upon your family, their families. Have fun, have, have mercy upon their leaders. Have mercy, God. We need to pray for the masses, even to fall upon our leaders, even to fall upon our president in the name of Jesus, because there's powers operating to the people. They are, they don't know, but there are forces that is forcing them to do things they are not allowed to do, to do things they are not supposed to do. Because of these forces, they make people to embarrass. They are the powers that will embarrass you. They are the powers that will disgrace you. They are the powers that will make you to be really embarrassed. There, sometimes you cannot be able to speak or to answer a simple question. Just a very simple question you cannot be able to answer. Those are the powers of the Father's house. They are very strong. Therefore, God will have mercy on you. And God will have mercy on, your, on the people, my Father. Father, have mercy upon your people, oh God, my Father. Lord, I want to thank you this hour. I bless your name. I give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God and my Father, you are full of mercy, multitude of masses. You are still our God. We pray that God have mercy. Have mercy and heal everyone that is looking for healing. Have mercy, God, touch the lives of your people. Those who need to touch God once again. Lord, my Father, touch them. Touch them, my God. Heal them. Deliver them, my Father. Those who are looking for deliverance. 
Heal them, my father. Deliver them, my God, my father. Those who are going through uh, divorce, through separation, through through difficult times, their spouses, their husbands, their wives have dishonored them. They have disgraced them. Lord, have mercy upon them. Deliver them, God. Their children, children have returned against them. They are rebellious. They are cursing them. They are, they are fighting all this war that has rest in your family. I pray that God will have mercy on you and destroy anything, any strange that has come, any powers of darkness that has visited you. Let them catch fire and burn to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will touch your life and your family and your children and your children, children in Jesus' name. Your grandchildren that have become so rebellious and they are turning against their parents. Let these children God to touch them and have mass upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I want to thank you, Father. I bless your name, God. I give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the masses of God fall upon your sickness. That sickness that has been in your body for a long time, let the masses of God remove them. God of mass, let him touch you and heal you. When God touches uh, Bartramao, son of God, son, son of the Mile, he was able to see and do his work. He was suffering. He was being tortured. He, he, could, he was being brought in the every morning to the same spot to beg. But God of mercy appeared to him and healed him and gave him his sight and gave him his sight again. God will give you your sight. God will give you your sight to see once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I bless your name. I give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. God is good. God loves you. I love you. Therefore, people of God, it is the time that I have to stop. And if you need prayers, I am here to pray with you. I'm here to stand with you. God will have masses upon you and forgive all your sins. And if you need my prayers, I am here to stand with you and agree with you. And you can call me 905-792-3798. God will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. And uh, this is your host, Prophetess Dr. Christine Sigi, saying bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. See you tomorrow, 9 p.m., 9 a.m. And today, tonight, we have prayers. Our prayer and fasting, it is, it is night at 12 midnight. And you can join us through prayer line or through popcorn. Uh, most of all the prayers, most of the prayers, they are not in, in a, a, a popcorn prayers. The one we are de doing at night, they are not in Periscope, they are not in U YouTube, they are on the radio. You can go to the, our radio, uh, Overcome Us, DHM Radio. You receive the radio and the, the messages are there. Also, you can go uh, to, to our website. All the contacts are there. Go and donate an amount. If this ministry is, 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 is blessing your heart, is blessing you, be a partner, be a part of it, be a partner, be a partner with us. You can donate an amount. And I want to appreciate everyone that has donated to us, our ministry. I want to read it. Some of you, I don't have your contact, but I've seen some people are donating. I don't even know them, but I am praying for you. If that you, you, the person who have been a part of our ministry, may God bless you. May God touch your life and give you your, the desire of your heart. I pray that God Almighty, God of heaven, will bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Remember our sister Sophie to donate to us her, her, her funds because she roast things on the fire and we have to, to support her in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much and God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.